Hi, I'm Dave Brichetti. I teach computer programming to kids, among other things. Here's my website. Here's the page about teaching kids. I teach in a summer program called Diablo Valley College and College for Kids. And in here, I have a variety of links to sample files and things like that, and also some delicious links related to learning programming. The first environment I'd like to show is Scratch and Scratch comes from Massachusetts Institute of Technology and they have a nice community here at the Scratch website. You can create projects and share them with other people and uh, form friendships and comment on other people's work. Uh, so there are all sorts of sample projects here that you can take a look at. Uh, so let's look at Scratch itself which is a desktop program. Um, so you see a little place here where you run your project and then here is where code is, your scripts for your various sprites. These things are called sprites. So I'll just show you one here. And um, so this is just a guy who moves along, apparently moves along, but actually it's the background that moves. And uh, here's uh, some code for it. So. Uh, it basically looks for right arrow and left arrow key presses and then um, lowers, raises and lowers the speed when those keys are pressed and uh, and then that's what makes the backgrounds move. The backgrounds, they are two separate panels for the background and what they do is they position themselves always based on this variable. Here's the other one. It positions itself based on the variable but uh, it's offset from the first, so the two join seamlessly. Let's take a look at some other Scratch projects here. Here's a project about a cat that wants to go on a hike in a canyon. I'd like to hike into the canyon! And <coughs> he moves over and discovers that it costs money, so he has to find the ATM, and then when he gets to the ATM, you notice his, his costume changes, so now he has money, and then he goes back, and then he goes off into the canyon. So that's just a silly story. And here's the code for that. And so we have these three sprites, the cat that has four scripts, and then the toll sign and the ATM, and they don't really have any uh, behaviors of their own. So when it starts, I'll just highlight some of this stuff. So the, uh, the broadcast start, and this, is, and this use that's kind of like calling a subroutine to start to initialize things, put things in the right places and the right size. And then he uh, plays a recording of my voice which is, which sounds like saying I'd like to hike into the canyon and then his thought bubble here appears then he meows and then this is a main loop here. It looks to see if it's touching the ATM and if it is it increases the cash and moves him slightly, switches to the costume with the money in it and then says thanks ATM and then when he touches the toll sign, if he doesn't have enough money, then he says, better find an ATM. Uh, if he touches the toll sign and he does have enough money, then we take $20 from him and he calls this subroutine, essentially, hike, and then all the scripts stop. So here's this subroutine for starting, and it switches to the no money costume and shows the cat, sets his cash to zero sets his size, puts him in a certain place, and points him in a certain direction. And then when we want to hike, we put him in a certain place, point him in a direction, put him behind other things, and then this is sort of an animation that makes him move away and then uh, uh, get smaller, and then hide himself, ultimately. This code here, forever, looks for key presses. And um, so you press down arrow and we subtract five from this y variable of the cat. So essentially we're moving the cat around with the arrow keys. So that's what this one does. Okay, so next let's take a look at Alice. Alice comes from Carnegie Mellon University. It was uh, created uh, in an effort to keep girls interested in computer science and science and math after uh, middle school age. So. Um, there's a new version, a beta version out. I'm going to run that. And uh, one of the nice things about it is it incorporates animations from the Sims 2 characters. 
So what we'll do is we'll start off in a world here. And there are some glitches in the beta. And we say edit the scene, and now we can add characters to the scene. So we can create people. There are all sorts of animals and things. And you can randomly choose uh, selections. And now we have this person. We give it a name. And now the person is here. Um, I can use these arrows to move up closer. And then I say edit code. Now I can do all sorts of things. The person has lots of lots of procedures, uh, like doing sit-ups and things. So I can preview some of these features, and that's it's going to do a sit-up. You can put that in a loop and get more. Um, you can also have the characters uh, think and say things. Make a custom string, like I think. Uh, do a sit up. So you see that. You run the program. This is what we have so far. Should make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And then let's put the sit up in there. So here's do sit up. So you drag things into place here. And you can put them in loops. You can have if statements. You can work on uh, collections of objects so they all do the same things. So let's run. She says this, and then she does the sit up. Um, so uh, that's Alice. There's lots more to that. Uh, let's take a look at Python now. You all know Python. Python.org is the website. And so when I teach, I sometimes use Eclipse. Uh, so let's show a simple program that I teach kids with. It's a simple text adventure game. And uh, the idea here is there are places that we define that are in the game, and then there are transitions between the places. So if you're at the airstrip, you can go to the forest. If you're at the forest, you can go to the airstrip in the cave. And uh, we choose the starting place randomly. And then we have one main loop here that tells you where you are, and then uh, tells you where you can go, and asks where you want to go. If you say quit, it, it, it stops. If what you typed is actually a, a real destination, then this little bit of logic here, one out of ten times, you'll be struck by lightning and the game's over. Otherwise, you move to the new place. And uh, so it's very simple, but it's a good beginning um, for learning how to make a, an adventure game. So here we're running it. We're at the forest, and we can go to the cave. From here, you can only go back to the forest, and we'll go to the airstrip, and so on. So that's just the beginning of a game. Now, Pygame is another, uh, it's, a, it's a library. It's a Python bindings for a, a popular um, graphics library. And there are lots of uh, nice little 2D uh, games for Pygame. Uh, so let's take a look at a program that I wrote with uh, my class. And it's very, very simple. It looks like this. So there's a, a B that's animated. I made it using Inkscape. And you move it around with the arrow keys. And you try to pick up pollen from the flowers. And you get uh, your score increases as you pick up pollen. And that's all there is to it. It's, again, just kind of the beginning. But, um, you know, it's a lot of code. The main uh, module here is 78 lines. And then there's another module for the B, and another one for the flower, another one for the score, and some utility logic. So that one is uh, fairly complicated, but it's a good beginning. Um, this year I made a very simple Pi game program. I called it Simple Pi game, and it just loads the B image, and then has logic in here for moving it to the right. And I let the students, I give the students challenges, like make it move all directions, um, add another sprite to it that you could control with different keys. So I can move this with the right arrow, and that's all it does. Uh, another challenge is to add a computer-controlled character. Okay, so that's Pygame, and that concludes my look at some of the software I use 
for teaching.